Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the tri board meeting. Uh, we have the finance committee, school committee, and select board here. It's a little pared down. We're missing one select board member. He went home to go back to sleep, so he get up and plow snow again soon. And, uh, we have a couple others who are coming running late. Yeah, so we get a dusting to a couple inches tonight. Oh, I didn't know that about tonight. I thought it was supposed to skip us. Never mind. We're on camera. Well, you know, it could be a dusting. That's still. All right. So let's kick off the tri board meeting. Molly wants to bring something up that we talked about last time that we need to readdress. So uh, at the last meeting, if you remember, we talked about um, VizGov, which is the virtual government website. Oh, and I'm sorry, you weren't here, were you? No, oh, you are, okay. So um, the way that we left that, if you also recall during the course of the meeting, we were talking about possibly using university resources because we're you know, we've entered into an agreement with UMass and they're um, going to be providing us with resources as part of our uh, tit for tap <coughs> arrangement. Um, and it was suggested that maybe we could utilize university personnel to help with this purpose and avoid the $3,000 um, kind of one-time setup fee. So I had a really nice conversation with um, Annie LaCourt, who's from the software company and asked her what really the $3,000 was for. You know, what was the primary composition of time? And as I suspected, it's really primarily data mapping. So it's taking our chart of accounts, our file from VADAR, and making sure that it correlates to the way we want to see the data presented in VSCA. Uh, and being an accountant and having majored in accounting at, um, in a university system, I know what is taught for municipal accounting and it really bears no resemblance to <laughs> the reality of, of <coughs> life. So unless somebody has actual municipal experience, I think it would be extremely difficult for somebody technically savvy, though they may be, to complete this in, in an effective manner and in an efficient manner. So to that end, I'm bringing it back and suggesting, I think we'd really be better served if we want to do this anytime soon to just biting the bullet and paying them the one-time fixed price of $3,000. Um, what that would entail is she would then coordinate with the town accountant, obviously the town administrator, um, from a timing standpoint, just to sit, go through our reports and, and literally do the data mapping. Um, she said the technical side of getting this up and running is pretty straightforward. So with that in mind, I know that there had been a little bit of conversation with the Finance Committee that um, there might be a possibility of using some of the reserve fund monies for this purpose. So that's why I wanted to bring it up tonight. Um, we are not a quorum, and um, I think it is something that we would take up at um, a meeting as uh, what would be a reserve fund transfer request from the tri board or from the select board for it. I guess it would be from the select board, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you need, okay, from the select could, board, well, so then you need a vote too. So I, yeah. Yeah, I make their request and then we'll be able to, we'll put it on our agenda for our next meeting. And um, uh, I know uh, the, the other possibility is, I know that you closed the warrant last week, but there are times when you, uh, you you know, you when open it for things that come between now and May 1st. Another possibility is, is if you do get it open, to get an article on there so that it's something that it could be, uh, could be voted for. So that would be two ways to fund it. Um, sure. Um, we could also do a like a line transfer in the last two months of the fiscal year. That's another way of funding it. Oh, from a line that's in excess? Yeah. And, you know, honestly, part, part of this is. Uh, I think the sooner we get it up and running, the better off we'll all be. I think it's something everybody can utilize. Um, obviously, the funding you know, has to be in place in order for us to move forward and mm -hmm. contract with them. And I haven't. It's just a one-page agreement. Um, so again, personally, I would love to see this happen sooner rather than later, rather than get pushed off to the summer. Yeah. Right. So just, just my two cents. I mean, does anybody else do, do we, does anybody else have a feeling of when they want to get it out there? Or how soon? I think it's we a great idea to get it out there. And Molly and I both saw a presentation of it at the MMA conference. It really does add a lot of transparency to the budget, both expenses and revenues, which is very nice information to have. 
So, so, so when's your next meeting? Um, is it next week? What, what, when's your when's your next meeting? Next week. <laughs> next week. Okay, then it's probably that same <laughs> night. <laughs> I think it's that <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'd like to join you. Okay. Now, so it's probably that same night. If uh, it, it's if we're not meet, scheduled to meet with you, then we're meeting at six thirty, and mm -hmm. then I think we'll take up whatever budget items you have for that night. So we'll be meeting at six thirty. Okay. So okay. Could, can you as part of your meet, or do, or do you want us to initiate it? I mean, we just need something to act on or to talk to initiate. We'll, we'll be happy to prepare the documents. You can sign it at your next meeting, which is next week. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're meeting with Park and Rec, the Library, Veterans District, uh, uh, for the budget and as well as reviewing on foreign articles. Mm -hmm. Next week. Next week. Yeah. So what are you going to prepare? I'll prepare the, the reserve fund transfer okay. documents. For the select board to sign, and then we can trace. Okay. Them to um, and I'll email you, and you. Yes, please. So that we, you know, if so that we don't get caught into a meeting delay, can you uh, get us the request even without the signature, so that we could have something to act on if we show up sure or if we come in a half hour early and, and meet on our own. Molly, this is a one-time expense, and then from then on, it can be updated internally with. Okay. Exactly. So, it's, um, so that it's not so it's fine to do it with fifteen, even though fifteen is halfway over. Exactly, because the other thing it's going to do is pull in four years of history as well. So, the sooner we start, you know, then we're just building up that that uh, history. So um, set, setting up a format, basically. Yep. So that later, as time goes on, we just fill in the blanks. Exactly, and then okay. the only thing that would have to be maintained is to the extent we change the chart of accounts in some way, we add accounts or whatever, then you'd want to make sure that those get mapped. But right, I was going to ask not about that if there's a um, a, a proofing, you know, every six months, some you know, some double check that everything's lining up right, or who, who, how do we oversee that it continues working? Well, I would hope that as part of the financial management if you're putting reports out that they're getting checked but to the extent that the source is going to be coming from the town accountant's own reports then you know okay so as long as yeah. well those are two different as long as the you, I was looking for glitches in the system I wasn't really looking as to whether we were getting the correct information in our right place but mm -hmm. actually two that's two ways it can go wrong but sure well let's see yeah. Yeah. so does it, take it, does it take it directly from Vader mm -hmm. so it exports it like in a CSV okay and then it just goes, once it's mapped, it just goes right in. Exactly. So the only other issue is if Vadar changes. Well, that's a, so to the extent we change our mapping in some, our, our own internal accounting in some way, uh, right. you know, adding accounts, moving things around, you know, then, yeah, you would need to make this part of that maintenance, the, the mapping, so that the CSV file is being generated, you don't have a row dropping on the floor or something like that. Yeah, to your point about making sure it's reconciled. All right, so we'll prepare those documents tomorrow and send them out. Okay. Thank you. All right, so on our other on our agenda, what to talk about? We were talking about <coughs> we our stabilization policy last time, and I think we all came to an agreement. So, just one last go around to see if we still want to. So we set, we're going to set our stabilization policy at 10%. 10%. 10%. Yeah. I was waiting for people. 10% of operating, annual operating. Mm -hmm. So you have, the select board has not voted on that yet? We will vote on it. No, we actually haven't. I think we have to do that. We talked about doing it tonight. We talked about doing it tonight at Tribe Board, but we don't have a quorum right Yeah, now. we don't yet. Do you want to review this document very briefly so that uh, everybody's comfortable with it? Do you want it? Stabilization fund balances? Um, yeah, let, let's, let's understand what that is because what we were given was that it's at 11%. And it's at it was the 2010, it was 11%. Yeah, and now the document you're talking about going over is referring to 15 and 14% that we have in. So could you explain that? Sure. Uh, Yes. So this, uh, first of all, this format is in line with uh, the other financial management policies that we have. It's taken from the ICMA book on uh, assessing uh, financial condition of communities. Uh, and the, uh, 
the numbers are taken directly from Vedar for t 10 through 14 uh, and adjusted for audits as, uh, as uh, appropriate for 10 through 13. So the 14 numbers are unaudited. The audit is ongoing right now. Uh, there is an indicator as to whether I think that this is an, that there's some danger up ahead. This is meant to illuminate the long-range uh, uh, problems that may be developing within your uh, budget longer than uh, than uh, fiscal year rhythms that uh, can be eliminated through these these kinds of analysis. And I think that the, the trend shows that it's uh, uh, basically positive, stable, uh, not a whole lot of change, even though the number is big. Um, the recommended policy is the stabilization reserve will be established to cope with emergencies and then will be maintained at, I guess, 10% is what's being talked about right now. Um, and it says of the enterprise operating fund, it should be general fund. Uh, a contingency reserve fund known as the reserve fund, and this is something that I wanted to make sure that uh, this was okay to include, and maybe this is an inappropriate place to have it, but we're talking about the reserve fund that the Finance Committee establishes would be there to uh, provide for unanticipated expenditures to meet unexpected increases in service delivery costs, and it will be maintained at whatever percentage of net operating revenue currently and for the last several years that reserve fund has been at fifty thousand dollars so it's a very small percentage of, of uh, 13 to 14 million dollars but, but that's out of the budget this doesn't have anything to do with that doesn't have anything to do with the stabilization no I mean we could take it out and do our separate one that's what I guess we need to decide yeah, so I'm happy to take that out I just uh, in the standard format for ICMA these two things would be complementary that you have one for immediate problems and then you have one that is much larger that you would hold in reserve for major catastrophes or major unexpected, uh, unanticipated expenditures. A breach of the dike versus wanting to put visual government in video. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I don't know how comfortable people are keeping in talking about the reserve fund. Probably uh, we would uh, want to think about it a little bit farther. Actually, right now we're less than 1% oh, is yes. what we, I mean, it's 0 0.003. Mm -hmm. How much is used every year? Do we have an analysis of that? I'm sorry? How much is used? Of the 50,000, how much is used each year? It varies, I know it can vary. Vary. It, it, varies varies. Quite, it varies quite a bit. One year, when we were maintaining it at 80, we almost over 70,000 was dedicated to the um, Parker School roof or the, whatever, the Council on Aging roof <laughs> um, repairs that were needed to be done that year. Right. So that was a lot in one place, and that was the place for it to come from because right. it didn't require going to town yeah. meeting, and anything coming out of the stabilization fund requires a town meeting vote. So Reserve Fund Finance Committee has it, has it handy, um, even if it is a capital in nature, but mostly it's for um, unanticipated budget overruns and the like. And we have found that 50 has been sufficient for the most part, except for that one year. So maybe we go with a, a fixed, fixed, dollar, fixed amount. dollar amount instead of a percentage. It's been working for us. I mean, yeah. I see why, you know, and then it also can fluctuate from year to year. And we use that reserve fund to explain to but to departments as we're cutting their funds because they they like to maintain a bit of a cushion in their own accounts. Sure. So of course, so we say if you have a sh if we have if you move that cushion over to reserve fund, it's there for you and it's there for others. Now I know it has to meet a different standard than it's in their own budget. So I'm not saying they're equal, but it's anything in the reserve fund is available to the entire town, theoretically including the school. Mm -hmm. I mean, more than theoretically, including the school. So it's. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Oh, I like the theoretical part. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's available for everybody. Um, so that's why we. I don't think we'll ever see. We we'll want it to go below the fifty. So then, do we want? So I guess two questions: Do we want the finance this f amount in here with the uh, stabilization information, or do we want a separate policy on it? Separate because so it doesn't stay as a fund. It rolls back into free cash on an annual basis. Right. So when we do separate, so we'll set it up as a separate <laughs> policy. Mm -hmm. right. And for now, we'll just do a flat fifty thousand dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I'll, I'll, would you find it helpful to have a policy on the uh, reserve fund? No, it's something that we uh, we proposed. We found it necessary one year when that we were ahead of tight budget to cut it from eighty to fifty, so mm -hmm. that thirty thousand was available to go into other departments. And I think that you know, the town should have that flexibility, you know, based on select boards and finance committee recommendations on an annual basis. So, we'll just do it separate then. All right. So I'll do. I'll, I'll clean this up. Uh, when when we awesome. have quorum, we'll we'll vote to send. Yeah. Right. You have your own internal. Right. Meeting. That that won't procedure. That won't be policy. It'll just be part of the normal budget process. Right. Right. Line item right. budget. Yeah. And you, you'll clean that up. I will. I was just sorry to yep. answer Grubby's question. So the reason we're discussing it, you're saying, is that that fifty is part of the uh, that top line item, which says stabilization fund and unreserved balances. No. 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 It's, then why are we? I'm, it is, I'm not the, still following why. Okay, can I it's take her back? From the sure. Go, going back many, many years, 2007. I'm picking a year out of the hat. I think it's 2007. David put together for the select board at the request, I think, of the, well, I mean, you were working on it anyway and in concert with the Finance Committee, this recommendation put together a format for the select board of ICMA recommended policies. So what you're looking at, Linda, are these are formats that are rip and read right out of the ICMA book of what's recommended. And the intent back in 2000 and whatever was that the select board would systematically go through all of these and kind of fill in the blanks down below and tweak them, change them, whatever, but come up with actually vote on policies, and that never fully happened. Some of them had been voted on and others have not. So what you're looking at tonight is one that just was never voted on, but David was carrying forward the format, so when we finally got around to discussing it, like we did tonight, that there'd be a decision. Okay, so that means that our second one in the recommended policy block comes out. Yep. yep. Okay, and now the first one, um, which we, are, we have, Tentatively said, or at 10 percent, that was kind of based on being told that it was at 11 percent. But I'm still not understanding why the um, our chart above says it's at 15 percent. I think we did say last week that it was 14. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 14. So it's, so it's the review sheet that's incorrect. And the other thing that we also no, so Howard brought up. The in the review sheet, we were talking about what the DOR. Recommendation is is five percent. Yeah, and it says we are currently at eleven percent right now, so we exceed this. Yes, we exceed, we're actually more at eleven. Okay. All right. So we're four percent higher than eleven. All right. And we also agreed that that didn't de facto mean that you hit ten percent and then you reverse stabilization and pull that income back in. It was just this is our policy. Right. Well, you are putting that at jeopardy though when you now. It's one thing to say 10% when it's at 11. It's a different thing to say 10% when it's at all is at, at 15. You're putting that extra 5% at jeopardy right now. Well, what it does is it begs a discussion of what's the justification, if any, for having 14.97% instead of 10. Okay. And then that's when you start talking about, well, what can go wrong? And we don't have, you know, Are so you we've got the dike, we've right. got all these other things, and I think we would have a healthy discussion about that. Or you look at the five-year budget projection, which if you look at the five-year budget projection, when we get to 2019, we're, we're, we're back at 10% if we don't sure. do anything to it. But still in the here and now, Yes. I, want it, I would like to add to that policy that we're not going to reduce the amount that's in the stabilization fund. Uh, all right, well then let's talk about it. All right, if we're implying that, let's say that. All right, but let's talk about well, what I'm you're just saying. Say, I think there's a difference between, you, you want your policies to be your guidepost. You don't want it to dictate the I want to know what we're talking about doing with this $2 million stabilization. I want to hear you say it. Well, I think you're right. In a sense, yes, we do want to say that we're not, if we're, if our number is above the 10%, mm -hmm. we're not going to take whatever is above 10% and throw it into operating budget. I think that's really what you're saying. That's what I'm asking. But she's asking for it to be policy. in the policy. That's just you part of our budget policy. process. But you Correct. could have as a policy a maximum. You know, so, if it reached 40%, we might say, 
That's a lot. That's too, too much. much. <laughs> yeah, the, the standard employer would look at it at too much money as a red flag. Exactly. Yes. Right. But so I don't think we're we're there. We're no, healthy. We're very healthy. And well, I, I understand what I understand. Your point is you don't want to run on the stabilization fund because they've enacted a policy where the percentage is different. Exactly. Than existing. Right. Because that'll we, double our trouble next year. Right. Of course. But I, I'm not sure that I, I don't know how you put it in a policy that might not handicap you in two years. That's that's my concern okay. is that it's too rigid. Right. Not to drop below two policy. million dollars. That doesn't sound rigid to me. If we're expecting well, more. Well, it, it might be. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Yeah. What if everything goes into uh, I don't know APR and property taxes well, come off the tax rolls and our revenue comes down to five million? I mean, can you do can you do your personal house in the APR? I don't know. You could sell it to a university, though. You could. I, I agree with Linda, though, that you have a different composition of the boards, and you're having a tough year balancing your operating budget. That's going to be a pretty enticing number to dip into for your to cover your operating expenses if there isn't some sort of statement that says a minimum of a minimum of ten percent a maximum of fifteen twenty I don't know and so that it is not in the future looked at as a piggy bank a piggy bank that we never break right I mean, there were, yeah, there's going to be. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just trying to think of the times that we've spent significant money on the stabilization account. The only time I can think of was back in 2006, when we went out to bid for a uh, for the HVAC system in this building, and the uh, contractor uh, signed the contract with the town and then realized that he had made a big mistake and then bailed on the on the town. We had to go to the next highest bidder. It was eighty three thousand dollars difference in contract price. And so we worked with the finance committee and the select board to take the eighty three out of the stabilization, but with the understanding that within a certain period of time that money would be replaced, which we did. Uh, I think that's the only time that we've really used stabilization other than buying the occasional cruiser. Uh, and, uh, oh yeah, there was that 25000 for the, uh, for the 350 yeah. I see what you're saying. I understand that, but then what do you do? How do you, how well, do you word that? One thing I was thinking about, is, is I don't know where this 5% comes from, but if the 5% is, uh, is something that's recommended for every town, 5% in large towns with large revenues is a lot of money. 5% in a, in a town like Hadley is a little bit of money. But just because we're a little town, does it mean if we need to repair a roof or place a furnace that they're going to give us a discount because we're small? It's going to be a much percentage-wise, a much bigger hit on our stabilization fund, as opposed to if we had 10 times that because we had 10 times the revenue. So I, I'd say you know, I'm, I'm glad we're saying 10 instead of 5% so that we are protected um, because we do pull, pay full price for our um, crises just as everyone does. We actually, um, actually probably, I, we probably pay more because we are higher small towns. So um, I, we need, uh, the 5% the, the is just grossly insufficient on you know, our size. But the 10, that's a, that's a minimum. So I, do we want to put a ma maximum on it? Or I just don't know what it means. The right maximum is I don't think 20%. I honestly don't think we'll ever get to the maximum. I, I don't, I, I don't I'm more concerned with the minimum. Exactly. Well, if we say 10% is the minimum, I and think. It's twice the state recommendation. I think that's pretty good. I mean, I can't see, even though even though we're above the, we're above it we're above it now, I can't see dipping into it because I know in four years, five years, we're going to be right there. That'll be the right number. Right. So I can't see taking it out knowing that. And if you always work on a four or five year budget and have a four year, five year budget projection, you're always going to know what that number is. So in the near term, you would never, it would just be a matter of how much you would put in to adjust to adjust the number. And then when the actual big thing happened, we actually had to dip into it for a, a real emergency. I, I completely agree with you. I understand. How do you, how do you, 
how would you say that so it makes sense to anybody else who comes in and and or do you want to say that? I'm I'm not sure. I mean, I can think of a situation that would be threatening the stabilization plan. At one point, a couple of years ago, we had people from the board town mm -hmm. meeting asked to take money to add to the school budget from so the stabilization fund. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure that the sort of maximum minimum would address that oh. issue. The policy, so I don't think it would be policy wouldn't control town meeting. Right. Yeah, they right. can right. still get up, <laughs> they can still get up yeah. at town meeting and make a motion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. And theoretically, if you have a, a a rogue select board, we could vote to change the policy. Right. And then, I mean, so, right? So, yeah, there's always true. those conditions. We can always yeah. choose not to serve. I, I just want to, as we're setting it up, let's at least do it initially, openly and honestly. And I just wanted to talk that through and know what did you have in mind that we all just sort of go along and say, yes, next no. step, what are we taking out? So, thank I you have for no not saying there are no intention of taking it out. No. None whatsoever. Because I have a five, we have a five year budget that has this huge. <laughs> Definitely no. Yeah. Okay. Brian, are you, were you going to advocate for uh, taking money out of stabilization this year? No. Okay, so there you go. Yes. So can we vote now because we have a quorum on the 10%? We do have a quorum now. Now you can officially open the meeting. <laughs> well, for the tribe board, you can. I know. Yeah. Um, no, I, I have no intentions of dipping into stabilization. So do we as a select board want to set, that, set the 10%? Um, of the operating budget. Of the operating, of the operating budget. revenue. Revenue. Or operating revenue. Okay. And currently the state um, recommends 5%, correct? If my memory serves me correct. But as we were talking, that probably averages in Boston. Well, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the average is in towns that have a goose egg for stabilization, too. Probably. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. guaranteed. Are they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. So, I'm comfortable with 10%. So, um, I'll make a motion then to approve the stabilization fund policy. Um, as represented. Um, as amended. Yeah, as amended. So instead of enterprise operating fund, we're going to say of operating revenue. That's our yes. language. That's the recommendation. That's the yeah. And the second paragraph under that is deleted. Yes. Out. Part about the reserve fund. That's yeah. out. That's out. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll second that. If you only vote on it, it's your policy. It is. Yeah. Any other questions from us? Mm -hmm. No further discussion, Mr. Chair. Anything you guys want to throw in? Congratulations. <laughs> we haven't voted yet. Okay. All isn't fair. Hi. Hi. Congratulations. I'm going to anything can happen. <laughs> so actually, we're on a roll here. Do we want it? So as we. <laughs> A scary one. So, as we talked about our priorities, instead of talking about the, the five year budget again, right now, um, and our top 10 priorities or areas of concerns we talked about. Yes. So, the stabilization was one, and how to set for a catastrophe was our second one. Um, and then we had talked about other issues that we, we thought were concerns we need to address in this. Um, do, do we want to? Maybe try to lump some of these together and things that we know we can do in a certain time period or, or, or things we know we, sh we can do outside outside this meeting or inside this meeting. Sure. Isn't the second one taken care of by stabilization? That $2 million is our stabilization fund. It is. So our, I think we're I think we got the first three. Okay. And maybe the first four taken care of. Sustainability and long term, well, no, sustainability and long term funding is something else. Well, why don't, if, if you're looking for something we can take up right now, we can go to decline in school population. I know you're going to. Now, my, you know, my first blush would be is that just a wave? I mean, do we have do we have 15 years of data that say our population ebbs and flows, 
because you're a small town, you're going to have years where you're right. where you're up and where you're down. Yeah. Um, and of course, they're all extrapolated out more because you're small. I, I know the Donahue Institute has just come out with long-term population projections that most of the regional planning agencies are about to adopt and start using. I, I can get Hadley's numbers yeah. to see what the projections are and then we can extrapolate from their school-age population. Right. Certainly in Franklin and Hampshire County, no, Franklin and Berkshire County, I don't know Hampshire County, the projections are to have small continuing declines in population and small continuing declines in school age population. And we can find out if the same is true for Hampshire County and Hadley. I believe it is, it is. for Hampshire County as well. So, that is not true. Right. But, but Hadley's school, overall school population is not declining. It's been a Yes, yeah, so that's, it's that's why. It's a question why of the, the mix of school, school choice, choice and, right. and local residents. Right. Right. So, I mean, I think we can talk that one through fairly easy. Did we just do it? I think we there just did it. There you go. <laughs> so we can cross it off. Well, well I, don't, I don't actually think it's quite that. Uh, one question, and I think I asked it um, during the school presentation, one concern I have, and, uh, and I'm sure the school committee talked through this too, is the. Um, when you have the reliance on the school choice, and what we saw was that we went from like 77, 78 kids and it jumped up to, was that 100? 100? 100. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so part of that is, you know, the ability or the decision on the part of the school committee by policy to open up seats at certain grade levels and all right, of that. Right, right. Um, clearly, the big driver is how attractive is the Hadley school system. Right. Um, and then the other piece of that is what competition is out there. Is out there. Mm -hmm. So very recently we had Amherst open up the Oh, elementary, cool. right? And then PD, PDCI, the Chinese Immersion School, adding, school. right? School. So, you know, we, used, we, we continue, and then Hilltown Cooperative moved to East Hampton, which may or may not be more or less appealing than people bringing their kids up to Hilltown. So, um, what I was looking at is during that presentation, it looked like the amount of school choice revenue clearly went up significantly with those 20 kids, but that's elastic revenue because it's depending on them staying in the system, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you're making your operating budget rely that much more heavily, was it like another 200000 or something? Oh, but remember how we open up slots. Right? Yeah. We're, we're not adding classrooms. We're not adding teachers. We're opening Filling. up slots in existing <clears throat> classrooms, and that's a, that makes a huge difference. Oh, well, I, I get that, but... Right. With that, what aren't you in your budget this year taking two hundred thousand more from school choice than you did last no. year? No, the school choice number is roughly the same, or maybe a little I lower. Think it, I think it's about. It was it's a more. the pres presentation we gave was that it was a little more than last year, but in between the last meeting and this meeting, we did vote to open up a special ed classroom so we just increased our costs right that was the eight thousand so, or whatever um, and if the point you're coming to is it's a risky practice yes it is yeah okay and that's and it, 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 because it, if it goes the other everybody's way everybody's doing it and everyone knows it's a risky practice mm -hmm. and you know i think the other thing that that presentation showed is you invest in your schools mm -hmm. and you win in the competition and right. you bring more kids to your school system so, but that's from from the town wide standpoint. It, theoretically, you know, the the risky proposition is that could kind of boomerang back, and now you've got costs that are, that are built in. If the school choice money went in the other direction in a given year, the only place for you to come is to the town. Right. Or, you, or, you or, have to or we try to maintain a balance in our accounts, which is what we're trying right. to do. Which is justifies that, the... Is that we want to have our own emergency account so that there's two healthy emergency accounts, mm -hmm. accounts that the town as a whole can rely on. Yeah. So one thing that was missing, or I was looking for in the presentation from the school budget, and I know it's kind of late to talk about it, but I was thinking about it after I was going back over it, is what is the goal and what improvements are being proposed in classes to keep being competitive and attract people. I know we attract people because we're a small school and the smallest people like that. 
and that's good. I mean, it does feel like a little community. My two daughters who went through it loved it. My third daughter who's choiced out, she choiced out because it was too small a community and the only thing she was was somebody's sister, little sister, she got tired of that. Uh, but, but, you know, what are we doing, what, what do we propose and how do we help bring new things in to make it attractive besides the small, I mean, we're small, we're tight knit. We do have a nice array of AP classes in the high school level. We do have a good feeling in the elementary school, I understand. I haven't been there a long time. Well, we made a big investment in technology and that's helped. Uh, we've got professional development in differentiated learning. Um, I think there's also a big effort in terms of school climate. Some of these things are less tangible, but certainly they help give a school a reputation in the Valley. And I think there have been some real uh, big changes brought in yep. um, around school climate issues that are bearing fruit and people are hearing about it. Definitely so. increasing partnerships in the, with the five college area, mm -hmm. which which we really were we were not taking advantage of the opportunities around us in the five college area, and we are working much harder on that. I think that'll be a big one. Like increasing rigor, increasing what? rigor, big watchword over happens. Is there? Yes, rigor. rigor. It's a fun word to say too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a rigor. rigor. <laughs> okay. I like that. So, was there, so was there anything in the budget though that helped with that? That we, you know, you can point to and say, this is what we're doing to help. Well, there are things that are not in the budget that we talked about. You know, we feel we need to put in forty-five thousand dollars to keep the IT system where it is now. That currently is not in the budget, and that's a problem. Um, but the professional development, that's included in the budget. The real ongoing relationships and expansion of relationships with five colleges, that's in the budget. Not as a specific line, but that's a changing the focus of what some of our staff are doing. And technology to the curriculum. That's a big focus of the professional development. So speaking of, of risk and protecting um, protecting the future from rogue boards. Um, when Brian leaves, we're just all, it's all <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's sorry. Sorry. House of cards. House of cards. <laughs> keep us in control. Oh, but from the town, so right now the way the laws are written, right, and who knows, I mean the formulas will change and all that stuff, hopefully over time, but the amount that we're funding, um, which now, which is very different from what we were funding to the schools, we, we being the town, um, a handful of years ago. And we're getting farther and farther away from that local required minimum contribution, right? The, again, the, just the legal requirements. And now, the more we fund, the greater the, the percentage gap, the, the requirement actually starts going in the other direction, so you wind up with funding up here. Theoretically, you could have a group of people come to the table and say, no, as has happened, we don't want to fund the schools to that level. Uh, whose board are we talking about? Are you talking about a school board or a select board? Oh, well, select board, so we'll, when we do the line item. Mm -hmm. No, granted, town meeting's going to set that. Right. But I'm just thinking we're talking about policy. I would think at some point the schools would want some other level of policy discussion between the select board and the finance committee around that local minimum contribution. And I don't think we, we don't have any policy on anything, whether it's a percentage of the overall budget or whatever. But I, I, mean, I think that's the direction we need to go with, not just for the schools, but quite yeah. frankly, we need to be looking at it for all of the, the town departments at some point. Because that's a, that's a risk, I mean. It is. It would, so, kind of talking more about technology in there. Is, is the need for more IT in the schools and the need for more IT in the town, is there a way to merge those two together and come halfway and, and meet half our... Meet well, half we need our a lot more on the town side than they need on the school side. They're just different. There's just it's more. We have IT. They have yeah. IT. It doesn't sound like the town has well, enough of a system. Maybe. You're, you're IT. You're I, I think there's a, there certainly is a way to improve both IT systems. You know, I think that we have the opportunity to do that through 
the broadband connections that we have in the town. There's better ways to communicate between the towns and the schools, but the, towns have, the town side has to make a bigger investment first to make it a viable, mm -hmm. to make it viable. Yeah. It is, but if you make the investment, you also have to maintain it. Yeah, right. Well, that's what... But is, is there enough IT stuff that the schools have two IT people? Two? Uh, you just added $45,000, you said, for IT. No, they want no, no that's not for, for staffing. You said it's for support. That no, was, no, 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 that's no, 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 no. free. I'm, I, to yeah, support man. the technology, but it's... it's oh, I didn't, I didn't mean staff support. I meant to support the technology. <laughs> Sorry. To buy new stuff. What does it mean? Upgrading equipment, upgrading replacing software, replacing, replacing things. And, and these are this is the equipment used by students in K through 12. Yeah. Yes. Does it also include um, uh, staffing, administrative computers, or yeah, is that that's in a separate? Yeah, it's the Chromebooks. Pardon? A lot. Of, uh, there's part of it is Chromebooks. What's what they use uh, at Hopkins now? Okay. Uh, it's like a tablet, oh, laptop. Uh -huh. kind of. oh. yeah. 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 It's a replacement. Keeping things at, at the level they need to be so that they can use them properly and productively. I know when a comment was made, I think it was when we had the collector here saying that she would, you know, it would be great to be able to call someone over at the school to come and help with some, with some you know, IT support. Um, is if there is a better way that we can coordinate the services yeah, that we have, the resources that we do have between the school and the town, everybody wins. Right. I don't know where we begin. Well, the first thing is you, <laughs> I think before we get to that point where we have a, we have a, I think on the town side, we have a major IT infrastructure shortfall or lacking. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think when you, you know, and this is one of our bullet points here, I think when you talk about the IT for the overall town, before we can sit down with the school and say, man, we can get some cost saving benefits by sharing this service and that service and this service, we've got to get from the ground up to where the school is. We have to play catch up IT infrastructure wise compared to where they're at before we can even have that conversation. I don't know. I think IT is at the point where if you don't, if you're not talking about the two IT systems, you can end up going this way instead of going this way. That's kind of why, like, I, I, if we're going to do something, I'd like to make sure we're kind of in, in, in like in, step and step with the school, so we're not going off in another direction. Right. Well, we had the well, conversation last time about the five-year IT plan. Yeah. Which I, you never did get a. You were going to get a copy of that. I gave. Uh, what I did was I gave you all a summary of a uh, presentation that was made to the department heads a couple of years back that talked about uh, a program of moving our IT to a place where everything is on the cloud. We're using mm -hmm. terminals rather than, than uh, 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 desktops uh, where we're able to do share programs, share, share files. Mm -hmm. So th that's all in your, your mailbox. But we don't, um, I thought there was an actual five-year IT plan we talked about last yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not spelled so out. So it's, it's, it's a vision, it's not a It's a plan. vision. Okay. And so we, we wanted to get it done in five steps. Is there anything? There are several, I know several firms that have been doing this in Franklin County, doing IT audits and coming into the town, doing an analysis of what the towns already have, talking to the towns about what do you want to do, what, how do you want to communicate, do you want to communicate with your schools, and then they develop a plan. There's a cost to that. Any and idea what the price range is, Linda? I the Franklin County towns 20? that have done it for the audit mm -hmm. is somewhere between two thousand and five thousand dollars, and that has I come up with with, stuff. That's all. with <laughs> kind of a, an assessment of what you currently have, okay. an analysis of how to get where you want to get, and then a kind of capital list of the cost and how to get there. Just remember, it's been very valuable. Huh? Pennies add up. I know pennies that up, but when you think about the lost productivity of people sitting around because they can't connect things are locked to up or they're locked up, I'll take the two thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and we did it at the Council of Governments, and unbelievable efficiency improvement, being able to have what David said, 
point. A network system with shared filing and constant yeah. backup and. Yeah. But you don't get oh. that for two thousand dollars. No, no, no. You no, get the start. start. You get the you analysis. Get the plan. Yeah. Right. You get the plan, and the plan tells you the right. cost yes. to right. build it. Yeah. And then so, next so time one department right. comes in and says we need a new computer, you know just what computer we're going to get there, right. or we do a comprehensive. Everyone's getting right. computers under an article. Is there any article on, on the annual town meeting yard that can cover? Uh, I don't think we till capital. It's well, just I'm, a generic one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. we still have an opportunity to pull something together. Yeah. So is there any reason why we shouldn't do that? I don't believe we shouldn't do that. I think we should talk to the preparators because they've done some of that already under the grant. So let me get a summary of from them what they think the next steps are because we've done some of this already. Right. But last week we talked about it. Yeah. And I mean nothing materialized from, from Paradis about it. I mean, I, quite honestly, just given the level of discontent that's been articulated about the service that we're, we're getting, I think maybe, especially if we're going to, we'd be wrapping the schools into it as well. It's I a, don't know what the cost of that would be, but it's, but it's been done and it can be done. Be would, would you smart to do it? Would you be interested in that if we're going to be talking about shared communications? Well, I would think any kind of advice we get on this side, we want them to be conferring with what's going on over at the school so that we can yeah. ultimately save some more money. Right. I, I think that there's some benefit in having it be independent from the existing service provider. Okay. I agree. So we do in our packet today have, uh, so maybe we should uh, re review this a little more and talk about it a little more. What well, well, it was in our box. I don't know if it's yeah. in your box too. You can get your copy of this. David, why don't we talk tomorrow? And I'll give you some names of towns in Franklin County that have done it, and maybe you, you or I can call the administrators and get, get the documents they need. Yeah, that. I'm sure it's been done in Hampshire County too. I just don't know. So. And I'm coming in at the tail, and I'm sorry, but about using your IT person, that's an awful lot to put on him since he already has enough to do for your whole system. Um, he certainly is, you know, could answer some questions here and there, but certainly I don't think that we should make him liable or responsible for, you know, carrying the whole schmeal wheel. That's not even feasible. Point, Although yeah. if you actually yeah. built up the IT support for the whole town, right. it, it might be more than one place. Yeah, it might be more than one person doing it, but they're coordinated. Right. You know, but so I'm just saying you can't possibly just oh, no, you can't Michael, you know, for the whole thing. That's, yeah. He's pretty busy. He'd be going into early retirement, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that's an option. I've heard that too. That's with the state. Yeah. Not the school, the yeah. state. Oh well, actually if they improve it, we'll get a chance to talk about it. Yeah. Okay, so is that an action item? I think it is. I think so. We have the we have this. We'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Then we also have our plan that we already have. Of what was uh, don't choke when you read the last page. But yeah, we have. Can I can I see what you're looking at? If this is something that we are considering for annual town meeting, I, um, I just get confused sometimes when we have an action item at a tri board. It's not to be reported on the next tri board. Can, can, can select board take this over and handle it for follow up next week? Is there? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, that was my. my okay, oh, that was the intention? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. But thank you for. So I think we started talking about some of the, the, the numbers that were presented to town meeting versus what's required. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. Um, <laughs> I told you. I, I, looked, I looked at the Department of Education, or uh, I guess Department of Elementary and Secondary Education website for the Chapter 70 program. I was very surprised to see the number there. Um, so I had expected it to be somewhere around 5.5, and it actually dropped down to 5.2. Uh, you want that extra $20 for child? Yeah, so, so I'm not sure I believe the number. That's what I'm saying, is that the number appears to be too low. Now, Hadley always supplies more money than the, the minimum throughout of our school system, and we uh, 
happy to support the education of the young folks. Um, but that was a big drop, and I was wondering if you had any insight as to why that happened. Well, you can ask Chris mm -hmm. if he's looked into it. Okay. So we have an IT thing we're going to work on. And BizGov. And BizGov we're going to work on. We kind of came up to a great policy statement. 10%. It's just not, it's going to be nice to just tell people this is what we said, this is why we said it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Do we want to talk anymore about it? Do you want to? <laughs> only got 10 minutes left. I know. I know. Exactly. We just can't have dead air. Well, well we have the uh, five year projection. Yeah. We do. Oh. Were we, last time we talked about getting actuals in for 14. And I haven't seen it. Don't see that change. Right. So that uh, I went, I checked those numbers, and those are actual numbers. I did find a typo in there, uh, so I made that one correction. Um, so where it says estimated, a time, that estimate is only because we haven't completed the audit for 14. But those numbers for the revenues are solid. So unaudited, unaudited actual. Unaudited actual. Just the 14 column. So yes, I did notice we lost thirty thousand. Is that what you're talking about? The yeah, there was there was some sort of typo, and I think that was in um, court fines. I think for some reason I hit the six as opposed to three. When Is that true for the expenses also, where it says uh, estimated? Those are also now. Those are also those are now paid our numbers. Okay, so they really were before. Yeah. What you're saying. Yeah, well, except for that one typo. Okay. Um. So our motor vehicle excise tax has gone up over a hundred thousand. Yeah. All I know is my '94 Toyota Corolla is more, more has cost more in taxes than my 2008 Honda minivan. Okay, yeah, I don't understand those either. It's $25 for it's yeah. Pretty sure. yeah. No, it's not. Um, the other thing we uh, talked about is that once would be uh, some increases in meals tax, that how they might be incorporated so that we could increase our projection over time. I finally got in touch with the Department of Revenue on the meals tax. Um, as you know, the, as I've reported, the uh, the meals tax in the first quarter of FY15 doubled in size, went from about $60,000 to $118,000. And I was hopeful that that was all driven by U.S. football coming back. I got a clarification from the Department of Revenue that uh, two restaurants had fallen into arrears on their meals tax and have entered into a payment plan. Uh, and that, that's the reason why we're seeing that big bump. We're going to see that payment plan play out over the next couple of quarters, and then we should see those numbers return to uh, where we expect them, which is about 20000 per month. So I've not adjusted the revenue figures in the future for meals tax, knowing that, that this is just going to be a little hump in the road. So it the only one it would affect, we're going to talk about the next couple, it only affected 15 receipts or maybe a bit into the 16? Uh, well, 15 would be, uh, we would we would see that increase. Uh, what do I have it down for? I'm looking at the right number. For meals Yeah, so for two, two seven, 276,000, mm -hmm. um, that number is going to be higher. And I think it's going to be higher by somewhere between $100,000 and $180,000. But that's not going to last. It's not really So great. then it drops back down to 300 and FY16? Yeah. So 300 is accurate going forward? Right. Okay. Unless we make a new policy that we have to eat out before every meeting. We could do that. We made a policy that all of us have to eat in Hadley. In Hadley, in Hadley. before the meeting. <laughs> Important. <laughs> 
In our new cars. In our new cars. Look at this. You know, cheap the restaurants here. Why people spend just as much on cheap ones they do as expensive yeah. ones. Cup of coffee, it's only a couple pennies, but you drink a lot, a lot of, of coffee. coffee, it adds up. Starbucks has a drive through So in our miscellaneous receipts. Where's that go for? It's um, the one about halfway in down. Okay. Including, yeah. Medicare. Including Medicare. Including Medicare. We budgeted for 69000 but we're, we're getting less than that every over the last four years we've gotten less than that our last two years we have here three years is that I mean we're budgeting for 69,000 all the way out but we're getting 40 uh, 33 21 we don't want to go down yeah but <laughs> that makes the job harder yeah, but we budgeted we budgeted an unrealistic number. David, mm -hmm. do you, have, you think that sixty nine thousand for miscellaneous revenue is still realistic? I think for this year it is. It's very hard to project uh, going forward because miscellaneous is miscellaneous. Right. We're going to see some changes in health care under uh, federal leg legislation that the prescription drug. Um, reimbursement is going to go away, and that's a significant part of the, that sixty-nine thousand. That's about twenty thousand dollars right there. So, so it's so going to go away. Why? I think I think I made these uh, numbers back before I understood that that was going to happen. So if you want to reduce those numbers, that's fine. Yeah, because I mean, since two thousand, the highest number we've gotten since two thousand and twelve is forty thousand. So that's just the area we need to think about. Are we still nervous? We don't yeah. want to reduce it for 15, though, because we just said we, get, we just heard we're going to get a jump in the meals tax, so we can kind of. That's no, for be 16. No, you're yeah, really 16. 16 and beyond. Yeah. yeah. But then again, where do we put the pilot money? So for all the pilots we negotiate with uh, solar projects, so that goes into no growth. New growth. That just goes directly in, so it gets rolled into the every year new growth. Yep. So on top of what we estimate for new growth, we just add in the pilots on top of that? It's included in that figure? Yeah, it's included in that figure. So we just signed, a, uh, we just completed the process for a pilot for um, the second solar field on uh, Mill Valley Road. And then Hampshire College is going to be approaching you for a pilot for their project uh, in the eastern side of uh, town. And that's on your warrant for the annual top meeting. So we have, we'll have four solar facilities. Right, we're under pilots, and more on the way. We grow everything: yeah. power, food, ice cream. Mm -hmm. With the drying up of gas service uh, uh, in town and the potential choke on the economic development that that may represent, I think uh, promoting solar is a win-win for everybody. Yeah, and how much more capacity do we have to be able to utilize the net metering credits for these future solar projects? We have about 30% of our load that uh, is not covered by net metering credit uh, agreement right now. Okay. We've just uh, done an analysis through Nexamp for the Mill Valley Road one. Uh, and they think that they can do a, another net metering credit for us, which would uh, be worth about ninety thousand dollars a year. I mean, so that's I mean that's the part of it that a lot of people don't think of. Obviously, the pilot brings in what what we consider new growth and tax revenue, but we get a huge benefit from the net metering credits too, and so I think that's where people really have to realize yeah. the solar projects are a huge benefit to the town. So this new net metering credit agreement, and we, we haven't 
we haven't really uh, uh, brought this in front of the select board, but it would be under the SREC 2 program. So the discount won't be quite as, as steep. It'll be more like 16% rather than the 21% discount that we're currently getting. 16% <coughs> still pretty good. Still that number. Is, is this 30% we haven't, does that include the schools? No. Schools are currently covered by the 70% uh, the on that metering credit agreement. So the two schools, the two treatment plants, and the public safety complex get a 21% discount on their electricity. That's produced. This, yeah. Is it separate? No? Okay, just uh, just one more thing, because I know we're, uh, are we going to revisit uh, the policy on the capital stabilization fund and putting the meals tax in? Is that, if, because that's probably the last big item that, that we have control over in this revenue figure. I'm up for, I, I think so. I still think it should just, at some point we do need to do that, so if we want to do that for the next try okay. one. So we've set a percentage for the stabilization fund, but you know, we're gonna, so we're thinking in terms of, just tell us how to think about it. Are you thinking in terms of that we'll come up with a percentage instead of? This, then a dedicated amount we're talking about, Linda? Yes. I kind of, I want to lean towards a percentage. Yes. That's my view. Yeah, I agree. I think starting with what percentage that 290 is of our revenues and kind of sticking and saying that's where you know is that high low and well, I think going I forward. think we have to look at it from both sides I think we need to look at the capital issues that are out there look at how the pie that you're trying to to conquer and then say okay are we trying to do this in a 20 year plan 25 year plan and then you're gonna you're gonna whittle yourself down to a number, and then you look at so you look at it from the need side, and then from the dollar side, and I think that's how you're gonna be able to correlate it. And like I said, there's gonna be have to there's I mean you're you're not gonna have you're not gonna be able to spend a straight percentage on a yearly basis to tackle the massive capital number that's out there for this town, but it'll give you a starting point. And I think it's at that point where you have to get creative, where you do a project that has a 25 or 30 year lifespan and you borrow so that you get more bang for your dollar. There's a lot of things that can come out of that. But I think you have to look at not just the raw dollar side, you have to look at what you're trying to accomplish and work backwards. That's true. I think what was giving me the uh, impetus tonight was talking about the fact that we might have a jump in the meals tax for this year, and then it going back down next year. Right. And that by our current policy, that means we're going to have a jump in the amount going into the capitalization fund for one year, and then down again. Right. And do we, does that is that really appropriate, or is there some kind of middle that the steady figure that we want to aim at that year after year, whether whether we've got an issue with a particular restaurant or not? That we've got it, an amount that we are gain, that we're aiming to set in, and that the meals tax revenue will just be meals tax revenue. Right. But if it's a percentage of uh, the budget, then that yeah. takes care of that. I don't have anything in mind. I'm just yeah. wondering well, how we're revisiting I mean, this. And to, I think to, we to just yeah. to that case in point, let's let's take a theory here. Let's say we're going to have a bump in our meals tax money this year. We know because of those two restaurants, there's going to be some larger than normal what we'll call normal meals revenue. We've already had a discussion tonight about a possible IT infrastructure mm -hmm. problem within this town that we would like to possibly resolve. So the way I would look at it is somebody who used to be on a capital planning committee is, is all of a sudden you have new capital items coming into that capital plan and you have a known increase in one-time revenue, that's where you maybe right. look at a special project like IT infrastructure, use a portion of that money to start that project. I mean, that makes a lot but of sense. I mean, and then as far as capital as a percent of your budget, let's say you, you pick for easy figure in a 10% number, and one year you have to go over that, let's say one year you spend 12, well, you keep that in the back of your mind. The next year, you only spend eight, so that over five years, you're spending roughly ten percent. 
I mean, there's a there's a lot of ways to. Right, you can have a yes. range on that one. Right. And, and last thing, and the other thing we need to think about when we do this is what makes up that number. So we when we do a, a borrowing for capital, we don't put that. Right. That doesn't come out of the, the meals tax money. That comes out of another pot of money. But that really is a capital expense. Do we want to keep that in the percentage of capital expenses, or do we want to keep it separate again? And then if we go someplace else for money and get it from somewhere else, does that count? Is that right? So those are things we need to think about when we do that. We've been getting ourselves tripped up. And, I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to have, you know, with do we take it out, do we put it in? That we're basically a year behind. We actually don't move the money into capital, capital stabilization until fall. Right. But we're dealing with revenues to go into the budget meeting, so we're thinking, oh, we've got those revenues, but then we're really going to take it out in the fall. So maybe just do that as, as two different steps. It's like, we're not going to take out the revenues. We'll use it in the spring, and then the fall, we'll say about that amount, or, or whatever or that up, number is. Set up, an set up an amount maybe based on some other um, suggestions as you've made, Brian. Uh, It'll be, it would be probably be a lot easier for people to understand that where we set up a policy as far as capital is concerned and say we're going to our goal is to spend roughly x amount a year and then that way meals tax comes in it's straight revenue you don't have to even go through that article of moving it and then you can set up the capital program based on it's a special town meeting everybody knows we're going to have capital articles there We've already got the revenue in because it's a straight revenue number. We don't have to move it and then come back and spend it again. So that, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. So as we wrap this up, um, do we want to meet? Our next meeting will be on in April, unless April Fool's Day. April Fool's. Unless we want to do another <coughs> shorter, shorter meeting on the 18th. Well, what's our agendas look we like? Don't we have to do the budget department? Yeah. yeah, we still need to decide on that. We need, we need to work on those, too. Yes, we do. But the five-year plan actually plays a big part into that. So do we want to just keep the April 1st meeting, or do we want to keep the, do another, or just have the subcommittee meet between now and the April 1st meeting? Sure, we'll do that. Subcommittee? I think All right, so the 18th, you don't have anything on your agenda right now. We're okay. Okay, so the subcommittee, <coughs> subcommittee meet, will meet between now and the 18th, and then we'll decide whether we want to do, do some more stuff on the 18th. Okay. okay. So you just said tentative for April 1st? Uh, not, definitely April 1st. April yes. 1st, definite. The subcommittee of the tribe board will okay. get together between now and the 18th. Uh -huh. and Decide if we want to do something specifically for the 18th. Oh, okay.